preparation of cDNA for uh, library construction. Now we have the idea that messenger RNA it can be converted into cDNA and here basically three steps are involved for this conversion. The first step is that messenger RNA in the presence of reverse transcriptase it can be converted into cDNA. First strand of cDNA it is synthesized and then in the second step messenger RNA template it is degraded and now we have only the first strand of cDNA and then from the first strand of cDNA the second strand biosynthesis it takes place so that now we have double stranded cDNA that is now ready for insertion into a suitable vector and for the second strand synthesis DNA polymerase uh, it is used now, we have the idea from our previous discussion that the first cDNA cloning was attempted in mid-1970s and the most uh, widely used strategy was of Maniatis and co-worker uh, who performed cDNA cloning in 1976. If we have a look on the structure of the messenger RNA, we will find that at the 3' prime end of the messenger RNA, a stretch of adenine residues are present. And this stretch of adenine residue at the 3' prime end, it may be 200. And then a short stretch of thymine residue, it can be used as a primer to direct the synthesis of the first strand of the cDNA. When first strand it is synthesized, then the messenger RNA template it is degraded by alkaline treatment, and then the second strand, uh, which is synthesized, uh, it has a particular feature. Like at the five prime end, it can fold on itself. At the five prime end, suppose if it is a segment, it can fold on itself. So a so a hairpin loop structure it is formed at five prime end. And this hairpin loop structure, it can be used as a primer to direct the synthesis of the second strand. And then the five prime loop, it can be degraded uh, with uh, certain nucleases like S1 nucleases. And then it can be ligated in appropriate vector. So it can be explained with the help of diagram. And hopefully you are well aware with this diagram. And we explained this diagram with reference to homopolymeric tailing. So naturally, at 3' prime end of the messenger RNA, adenine residues are present that may be 200 in number. And against this adenine residue, thymine residues, they can be added as a primer. And then in the presence of reverse transcriptase enzymes and in the presence of alkali, the first strand of DNA, it is being synthesized. And as I told you that at 5 prime end, it can fold on itself. So a hairpin loop structure is formed. And this hairpin loop structure, uh, it is used to direct the synthesis of second strand biosynthesis. On the left side, we can have a look on the vector that can be used for the cloning of cDNA. And here, the vector is very famous, PBR322. It contains two selectable markers like the gene for tetracycline resistance and ampicillin resistance and a cloning site that is PST1 restriction enzyme. Then in the next step, second strand biosynthesis, it will take place in the presence of DNA polymerase and all type of four DNTPs. So second strand biosynthesis, it is there and then this structure here pin loop structure at 5 prime and it can be degraded with S1 nuclease and then after degradation then this cDNA it is treated with terminal transferase in the presence of cytosine residue if you remember terminal transferase it has the ability to add single type of nucleotide when it is provided and here the cytosine residues they are being added at one end and on the other hand 
The vector it is also digested with PST1 and it is treated with terminal transferase in the presence of guanine residue that is complementary to cytosine. So here guanine residues are added in the vector DNA in comparison with the cytosine residue of the cDNA. And in the next step, cDNA it is ligated with vector DNA. So this is the portion of cDNA that is ligated with the vector DNA. Then it is uh, transformed to a suitable host organism and the medium for growth, it is that contain specialized antibiotics like tetracycline and ampicillin. So only those recombinants will be able to grow that uh, have the insert into a suitable vector. And then after transformation during the growth process, the nicks they are ligated by the host organism. So this is an early strategy for cDNA cloning and it was developed by Maniatus and co-worker in 1976.